Welcome, my name is Terry White, and today I get to talk about one of my favorite new technologies, and that's Adobe Firefly. So for those of you who are new, and that's probably why you're watching this how to get started video, Adobe Firefly is Adobe's generative AI model. So we're gonna take a look at how you would get started generating your own content uh, that's commercially safe using Firefly, whether you're using it in the browser or whether you're using it in one of Adobe's flagship apps. So you can use it either way. And of course, for getting started, we're gonna spend most of our time in the browser since I'm assuming that you're, you're not even a Creative Cloud customer or maybe you don't even have any Adobe products yet. So it's just easier to show everyone from the browser. Then at the very end, I'll show you how it works in the apps as well. So with that said, let's answer another couple questions right off the bat. So uh, what is Firefly and uh, can I really use this to generate content and use it commercially? And the answer is Firefly is a generative AI model that allows you to use a text prompt to create content. So I would say images, but it just depends because now you can use Firefly to generate images like pixel-based photos. You can also use it to generate vector-based content in Adobe Illustrator. And you can even use it to uh, generate uh, text effects and uh, templates in Adobe Express as well. So you can use it to generate all kinds of content. Now, the one of the biggest questions I get asked is how does Adobe train its AI model? Because there's some bad examples out there from other companies, which we're not going to talk about today. But uh, Adobe is is training its Firefly model based on content that's authorized to use, primarily Adobe stock content, content that the copyright has expired out there in the public domain and the public domain content. So that is how Adobe's Firefly is, is trained. So that way you can use it without having to worry about repercussions down the line of somebody saying, hey, that's my work, you can't use that. Now, with that said, because it is trained on non-proprietary, non-copyrighted content, that means you can't ask it to create things that are copyrighted. For example, I can't say, hey, create a picture of Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck because those are owned by Disney and they're not, it wouldn't know what those are. So it's not trained on them. So if you type that in a prompt, I don't know, it's gonna be a mouse named Mickey <laughs> and a duck named Donald, but it won't be the ones you're thinking of. And same thing for other brands like Louis Vuitton, Rolls Royce, Tesla, anything like that. It doesn't know what those things are. So it's just going to generate what it thinks you're talking about, which is probably going to be disappointing if you're trying to generate a specific brand. So with that said, let's get started and I can explain the rest as I go. So I'm in my browser and I'm going to recommend that if you have a choice, use the Chrome browser. Google Chrome works best with it. You can use other browsers, but it works best in Chrome. And I'm on the Firefly website. I'm not signed in because I wanted to show you the experience you would get. So I'm in an incognito window. I'm at firefly.adobe.com. And that is the website to get to Firefly. So firefly.adobe.com in your standard browser. Once you're there, you will be asked to sign in. And when you sign in, you can use anything you want. Like you can use your uh, other social media accounts. You can use uh, or create an Adobe ID, which I recommend that's the way you do it. So if you create an Adobe ID, then you can use it across other Adobe products. Now, once you're in, once you're in, you'll get to do all of these things. But the other thing that people ask, and while I'm here is, is this free? What does this cost? And the answer is yes, it's free. And yes, there's a cost. It just depends on what you want. So if I go to the about section and I scroll down, I'll get all the way down to the pricing. So yes, you can use Firefly, Firefly for free today. And you can keep using it every day. It's not a trial. You can use it for free as much as you want, but you are limited to 25 generative credits per month for free. So that means 25 times clicking the generate button, not 25 results. And that's free. Don't, don't need a credit card. Don't have to do anything. You just sign in with your Adobe ID or other, other method and you can start using Firefly, Firefly for free. Now, if you do want to pay to get more generations, you can pay $4.99 a month. And that's just for Firefly and you'll get 100 monthly generative credits to hit the generate button 100 times a month. 
And uh, you don't have to worry about either one of these if you're already subscribed to any of Adobe's other paid plans. So if you're a photographer on a photography plan, you're creative using the full the all apps plan, any of those plans that you're already paying for, you already get to use Firefly. This is for only for people that are not existing Adobe customers. All right, so now I'm gonna switch browsers or switch, not browsers, but switch tabs. Uh, so that I can go to my signed in account. So now there's my little icon up there. I know I'm signed in. And let me let me give you an idea of how the interface for this looks and works. So first of all, you can start right off the bat and just type in a prompt right here and generate. Um, and it will generate an image based on what you type in right there. Or you can go to the different um, different generative AI features using Firefly. So for example, the big one that we all use or like to use is text image, and that is where you're literally describing an image and it makes it for you. Generative fill is where you upload your own image and you add things or remove things from it using the generative fill built into Firefly. Text effects is just what it, just as the name applies. It, it allows you to create generative AI based text. So for example, We'll use one. I'm in Atlanta. We'll use the word Atlanta and we'll make Atlanta look Atlanta-ish. <laughs> Generative recolor. This is taking vectors, so an SVG file, uploading it to Firefly and recoloring it, giving it a, a color theme. So this is more of a, a, a professional graphic designer would use this. So taking your vector work, usually work you've created in Illustrator or a program like Illustrator, I'll put as an SVG bring it into Firefly and recolor it. And by the way, you can also do this right in Illustrator. So you don't have to come back to the website to do it. Now, these, this, these last two are built into the app. So in Adobe Express, you can generate, which Adobe Express is template-based uh, content creation. So if you wanted to generate a flyer, a business card, a social post, so forth and so on, you go to Adobe Express and generate those things from, or not generate, but use templates to create those things. And if you want, now you can use Firefly to generate a template. Uh, so you can make a template that's custom for what you're trying to do. And of course, uh, in Illustrator, you have the ability to do text to vector. Just like up here, you have the ability to do text to image. So this would generate, uh, based on your description, vectors that you can then modify in Adobe Illustrator. All right, so now that we've gone through what these things are, let's dive into number one how to write a prompt. So I'm gonna click Generate. And what is nice about this interface, and I've always complimented the Firefly team on this, they did a great job in always giving you uh, inspiration so you can uh, see what other people have generated. <laughs> I love that, I not, hadn't seen this one yet. Uh, busy table of Teddy, what is that? Busy lunch crowd of stuffed animals in an animal in a in the dining hall at a stuffed animal retirement home. So that's an example of a prompt. Uh, it's it's basically, and I may come back to this and use it just for the fun of it. But it's uh, it's a prompt describing the scene, and it did it very well. That's a very good or interpretation of that prompt. All right, so uh, these are all examples. You don't have to use any of these. You can just go straight to the panel here. And uh, type in your prompt. You don't. These are inspiration. You can click on one of those and use it. But if you don't want to, you already have in mind what you want. Go right here and type. Now, I like to keep my prompts short, but also keep in mind the longer your prompt, meaning the better the better you describe it, more than likely it's going to give you better results. So I'm going to be a little more descriptive than I usually am in this one. And this is one I always like to play with because. It's kind of one of those things you would never find in stock, you would never find anywhere else because it doesn't exist. So I'm gonna type in, sorry, elephant uh, riding a bike, uh, wearing a top hat uh, in Times Square. I can't remember if Times Square is one word or two. But uh, I think it's two words, Times Square. All right, so there's my prompt. Now when I click Generate, and again, uh, spelling does count. So if you spell something completely off, it's not gonna know what you're talking about. And also just note that the prompt works in over a, or up to 100 languages. So you can type it in your native tongue. All right, so now let's go ahead and uh, see what we get. Now when I click Generate, 
It is now uh, reaching out to the servers at Adobe. So it's, it does require an internet connection to use this. And then it brings back those results. So an elephant wearing a top hat, riding a bike, or an elephant riding a bike, wearing a top hat in Times Square. And that's exactly what it gave me. All right, so that was number one, just the ability to write a prompt. Now, if you're writing a prompt and you need some help, a bunch of balloons, there we go. I just wanted to uh, start typing something new. And uh, you get prompt suggestions. So this is an on off, it's on by default. And just as I started typing a bunch of ball, I hadn't even finished balloons, it kind of interpreted, you're probably gonna say balloons. And then it started giving me the rest. So if I said a bunch of balloons floating over the over the ocean at sunset, I can click on that and it will give me the rest of that prompt. So if you're, uh, especially if you're new to this, chances are you might not know what to type yet. You haven't really thought it out. You haven't really thought of what you might want and therefore it's going to help suggest things for you. Now, uh, let's go back to my elephant example. So an elephant. Uh, riding a bike, uh, wearing a top hat in Times Square. All right. So when I hit generate and it gives me this, the uh, next thing I want to point out is that even though I just did this a minute ago, I'm going to get four totally different results because it never will give you, I shouldn't say never because never is, you know, it depends it most likely won't ever give you the same exact result twice. It's rare that you would see the exact same thing. So what that's to say is if you typed something and you liked the results, you better grab it right then and there because as you move on doing other examples, it's not saving any of this. So uh, if you, you know, move on and type a different prompt like I did with the balloons, if there was an elephant wearing a top hat that I really liked, it's gone. And I have to just try again and hope I get one that I like as well. So let's say I like this first one. I do have the option to download it. So I can say, yep, I want to keep this one. I want to download it. Or if I don't want to download it, I can simply mark it as a favorite. That way it stays in my favorites. If I view my favorites now, you'll see my favorites. And I can go back to, um, go back to where we were. All right, so those are some of my favorites I've saved, and here's where I just went back in the browser, and here's where we are. So that's how to write a prompt and using prompt suggestions. We can spend an hour just on prompting. And uh, I'll put a link to a prompt book in the description that uh, is very good if you're looking for a book on how to write cool prompts. It's got beautiful illustrations and examples, and I'll put that in the description of the video. Okay, next up, uh, number two changing the aspect ratio. You notice that these are all square. Well, over here on the right-hand side, you have the ability to switch from square to landscape to portrait to widescreen. I love widescreen because I'm doing a lot of um, YouTube videos like this one, where I want to generate a thumbnail or at least a picture for a thumbnail or background for a thumbnail. So the fact that I can choose widescreen gives me that right off the bat. Or landscape, which is typically what you would get out of a standard camera, shooting wide. Portrait is what you would get out of a typical camera shooting tall. And of course, square is square and widescreen is 16 by nine. So if I choose 16 by nine, uh, it doesn't do anything right off the bat. I would have to hit generate again. And then it will now, you notice the results look different in, in proportions because it's now generating 16 by nine versions of my prompt. So in a few seconds, we'll get those. And there they are, my 16 by nine um, versions of those prompts. And again, if there's something I like, I better favorite it or download it so that I can come back to it later. Okay, so that is how to change your aspect ratio. Next, number three is the content type. And I'm glad Adobe simplified this. At first, it was a lot of choices and it wasn't always clear as to what you were choosing. Now it's pretty straightforward. Number one, it will do its best to kind of guess what you're looking for. So it's on auto by default, but you don't have to live with that. If it didn't guess what you wanted, for example, it guessed, yeah, you probably want a photo of this elephant doing this, but if you don't want a photo, you can click art. And now it's added art as the style down here in the prompt. So if I generate that based on art, I will get illustrative looking photos instead of 
or, or creations instead of uh, photographic looking fo or creations, I should say. All right, so these look more drawn or painted, especially the background. Uh, and again, uh, just based on me changing the style from auto to manually choosing it. Now you might wonder what this, um, this intensity slider is. This intensity slider is literally what it implies. So it allows you to say, give me more of this look or less of this look. So if I generate based on that, uh, it's just going to be more of an intense visual image or result based on me sliding that slider. And there we are. And it kind of just looks more dramatic. I guess that's a good way to put it as well. More punch to the image using uh, intensity. All right. So that was number three. Content type was number three. All right. Moving on. All right. Let's move on to number four, which is one fairly new in, in Firefly. It's called Style Match. And with style match, this allows you to upload an image to help with the prompting. In other words, you have an idea, you type in your prompt, but it doesn't look the way you expect it. Well, if you have a photo that's similar to what you're looking for and you own that photo, you can upload it and say, make it look like this. So that's style match. So I'll give you an example. I'm gonna type in a prompt, uh, just a simple one, a beautiful woman, uh, with good skin, because maybe I'm doing a skincare ad. So I'll say beautiful woman with good skin. Now, it's just going to give me some random beautiful women with good skin. And uh, they may or may not look the way I want them to look. And that's the whole point of Style Match. So they look very artsy, and I can switch to photo. Uh, let's go ahead and switch to photo, and also let's switch to portrait. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. Do that generation. All right, pretty much exactly what I expected. It's just a variety of different women, different backgrounds uh, with great skin. As a matter of fact, a little too good. But anyway, let's say that I have a specific photo that I kind of want it to look like. So down here is match style. So I can either grab one from the reference gallery, but I have my own, so I'm gonna go ahead and click upload. And I'll go ahead and just show you what this photo looks like so you can kind of get the idea. That's for a skin, a skin beauty ad. Uh, so now I'll go ahead and upload that photo. And we're going to use that photo again later for something else. And now when I generate, you notice the photos down here on the, on the prompt, on the left of the prompt. Now when I hit generate, it's saying, oh, you want me to generate images that are similar to this one. And then it will give you that, uh, that, those results. And right off, the, right off the bat, they look very similar to the, ref to the style reference. Uh, so if we look at the style reference, um, we can upload our own, we can pick different ones, but that's what style match does. So that was number four, style match. Number five is show similar and favorite. We already talked about favorite and you already saw me do that. So I could, for example, let's go back one. Uh, let's go back in the browser actually. There we go. And let's say I really like this first one. Well, we already know we can favorite it. That's the little star in the upper right-hand corner. So if I click favorite, it adds it to my favorites. But I also have the ability, if I go under edit, to say, show me similar. Like, I really like this particular one. And show me similars of those, keeps the one in place, and then generates three new ones based on those um, that first result that I say show similar. And as the name implies, they look very similar to the first one. Now, so show similar and show favorite. And I do, do want to point out that if you didn't like any of these, you can always hit refresh and generate more. So that's a little bit different than a style reference or style match because style matches, you're picking a specific photo that doesn't change, stays on the prompt, and keeps using that every time you hit refresh versus show me similar to the results I just got. So that was number five, show similars and favoriting. Number six is using generative fill on your own image. All right, so let's go back home. Now, again, if you want to keep any of these, you better favorite them or download them. We're going to do more on exporting and sharing. But just keep in mind that once I go home, they're gone. They're gone. I can't get back to those. I can generate new ones, but I can't get back to those. All right, so now we, we basically did text to image. We showed a lot of things there. 
Let's go to generative fill. Now this isn't everything you can do in Firefly. This is a getting started video. There's lots more I could show you, but we're just doing the top 10 things. So I'm gonna upload my own image. We're gonna use that same image we, we saw a minute ago. Now that it's uploaded, I have choices on the left-hand side to either insert or remove or pan or move, you know, move the image around. In this case, I just wanna insert. So I get a brush and I can make that brush bigger or smaller using the uh, bracket keys on my keyboard next to the letter P. So I made the brush a little smaller. I'm just gonna paint da diagonally down her neck. All right, just like that. All right, and now in the prompt, I'm gonna put in gold necklace. And it should generate a gold necklace or three choices of gold necklaces based on this image that I already have. And there they are. There's necklace number one, necklace number two, necklace number three. I don't like number three. So I could click add more and it'll give me three new ones. All right, number one, two, and three. Ooh, I kind of like three a lot, but I haven't lost the first one. So I can go back to this first one and that's gonna be my winner. So what you, you have to pick, you have to decide one and then hit keep. Now, once you hit keep, that's it. That's been added to that image. And now you have the ability to do more. So if I want to insert something else, I'll go here to her ear and I'll just paint down. It looks like I'm erasing because it's gonna replace this space with whatever I type in. And you might see where I'm going with this. Fashion earring. And we'll hit generate. And there's one fashion earring. I could have said gold fashion earring, but that works as well. And I would probably pick this second one. And it just does a great job of even putting in the shadow, if we were to zoom in on this, the shadow that the earring would cast on her side of her face or neck. So uh, I could hit more. I like that one best. All right, so we'll pick that one and we'll keep it. And now if you finish generating or removing into your image, you can now just download it and it will download a copy of your original image with these changes to it. So you still have your original on your computer and now you'd have the new one that you downloaded or you can actually share it, which we're coming to. All right, let's go to number seven. Number seven is text effects. So text effects is as the name implies, it's just about text. So first on the left-hand side of the prompt, you enter the word you want. So I'm gonna just enter the word Atlanta, and then you describe what you want that word or those words to look like. I'm gonna say peach, peaches, because this is the peach state, and there's lots of peaches here. Peaches uh, and um, uh, leaves. All right, we'll just kind of make something decorative. And now it's giving me the word Atlanta, and now it's generating uh, the peaches and leaves to go on it. And there we go. So I got three or four different versions of that. So here's the second one, third one, and last but not least, the fourth one. All right. So there's my word Atlanta. Now you have some changes you can make over here. If you didn't, if you didn't like your prompt, you can always choose one of the sample prompts here. And so, for example, I could say. Um, I just want to give you a, another example for what I'm going to change over, over on the right hand side. So let's do dripping gold paint. All right, so dripping gold paint. All right, now I did this one in particular because I wanted some of the paint to be coming off the letters. So, and what we're going to, that's what we're going to get to next is match shape. So medium means the paint is kind of dripping off the letters. Tight would generate it so that there's nothing dripping off the letters and loose would be lots of dripping off the letters. So that's more tighter. There's only a little bit dripping off that. And if I go to loose, then I should get uh, spatters of, of paint uh, kind of all over the place. Yep, just like that. So that's what the tight, medium, and loose means. And of course you can change between different fonts. There's more fonts and hopefully we'll keep adding fonts. And you can also pick a background color or just leave it transparent if you want to put it on something else in another application, such as Photoshop, Illustrator, or InDesign, or even Express. And Express has this built in as well. All right, so that's text effects, number seven. Number eight. All right, so number eight, scalable vector graphics, SVG, and generating a color theme for your vector. 
So I'll click upload my SVG. There's a picture of a tint and I'm now gonna describe what I want that yellow and orange tint to look like. I'm gonna say purple um, forest. So purple forest generate. And then I get four renditions of a purple tint based on a purple forest. So you're describing your color theme, not your, um, not your actual content. So it's not giving me a forest. It's saying if a forest were purple, these are the colors I think it would be. And you can shuffle those colors within the results uh, to potentially give you some different, different results. So just like that. And then of course you can download your result if you like the one you picked. You can download it and that will become a new vector file for you to use. All right, number nine, and this is probably the most important part of the day, and that is uh, sharing your results. So let's go back to generative fill here, or, or I'm sorry, text to image here. And let's scroll through some of these. I don't know if I can find that uh, teddy bear uh, table again, but I'll, I'll see what I can find here. Oh, there it is. I love this. And we'll just click on it and we'll click one of the results. And I shouldn't say teddy bears or stuffed animals. And if I really like this result, I have the share button right here in the upper right corner. And with the share button, I can download it, meaning save a copy of this image to my hard drive, copy the link to this specific image, copy the image itself to the clipboard, take the image over to Adobe Express where I might want to use it in a template and add text and do other things with it, submit my result to the Firefly, Firefly Gallery because I think it's so cool. And if you are an Adobe Creative Cloud user, you can save it to your library of images to use over and over and over again. All right, now I, I said that I like this result for a reason because I'm gonna change it. Busy crowd of toy robots instead of stuffed animals. If you know me, you know I like tech, you know I like robots. And it's gonna be in a stuffed animal retirement home because I didn't change this part. So this is gonna be interesting. And just like magic, I get my toy robots at the table in the retirement home. <laughs> it's got pictures on the wall. This is hilarious. All right, so that was number nine, sharing and exporting. And of course, you can always favorite, you can always download. And if I do download it, uh, it'll save it to my, it'll name the file what my prompt is and save it to my downloads folder. So that's another quick tip. If you ever forgot what you, what you, how you got this image, it'll name the file the actual prompt. So that's the file name. So there you go. All right, let's move on to number 10 in our finale, Firefly in other apps. So we've been doing everything today so far on the Firefly website. If you want it, if you are using our other flagship apps, you can use Firefly powered generative AI in those apps as well. So if I head over to, for example, Photoshop, and I'm just gonna do a couple quick examples here because you kind of already seen how this works. So I have a picture of this puppy and I'm gonna just go ahead and say that I want to create a, here we'll draw, I'm just using my lasso tool. So instead of a paintbrush in Photoshop, you actually make selections. And then I'll use generative fill down here in the contextual taskbar. And I'm gonna just type in puddle of rain water. So I'm, I'm basically putting a puddle in front of the puppy. And not only did it put the puppy or it put the uh, puddle there, but it put a reflection of the puppy in the puddle of water because it's looking at the entire image, not just the space you selected. So that's pretty cool to be able to do that. Now, the one th you can do that already on the website, but the thing you can't do on the website is generative expand. So that's a that's right now just in Photoshop. So if I click on the crop tool and I choose to make this image taller. Maybe I'm gonna share it on social and I need a tall version. I can switch to generative expand in the crop tool and generate, I can type in what I want or just have it figure out what the rest of that white space would look like if the scene was that tall. And I get three results. I like that one. And I'd probably, ooh, I like that one too. I'd probably go with this one. So I get my puddle of water on one layer and my new background on the other layer. So that's Photoshop using generative fill fire, powered by Firefly.
For Illustrator, in Illustrator, you draw a shape basically, and you get a tutorial from Paul. We'll try that later. But now I'm just going to go ahead and use the generative generate beta, and I'm just <laughs> yes, I know it's just prompting me what to do, and I'm going to say that I want a blue tint. So um, blue tint, and the difference here is that it's giving me vectors for my blue tint. So I got different results here to pick from. I like that one best. I can make it bigger or smaller. I can constrain the proportions holding down the shift key. And best of all, it's all vector. So I can go in and literally reshape it using the vector tools in Illustrator. All right, so that is number 10 using Firefly and the other apps. If we head back to the browser, one more place you can use Firefly, and that is in Adobe Express which is all about creating content for, for anything, social, print, uh, marketing. And if I go to generative AI, I have the ability to do text image, generative fill, all the things you just saw, but there's one more, just like Illustrator has text to vectors, this has text to template. So I can say uh, birthday invite for Pam, Pam, my sister. And we'll hit generate. And the difference here is unlike generating a static image, this is actually generating an editable template. So if whichever one of these I pick, I can go in and literally pick up anything and move it around. I can change the text. I can do whatever I want. And you even have C variations on each one of these templates. If you kind of want to see something similar to what you have here, just like we did on the Firefly website. So this is Firefly powered generative templates, text to template in Adobe Express. All right, so I know I went kind of quick through these. Hopefully you got enough to get started. Again, I could spend an hour on any particular given feature and trying different examples. And there's a lot more you can do in the Firefly website on that right-hand panel to kind of tweak your style, camera angles and things like that. But this should get you started using Firefly today for free, or if you're already a Creative Cloud member, you've already got it as part of your package. So with that said, cheers everyone. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.